Hey, I'm Sabrina. Welcome to my channel, The Simple Happy Life, where I share about our homeschool, organization tips, and what we're up to. So I'm just gonna jump right on into this. In my last video, I shared with you guys what we're using for our, I guess, main curriculum for our language arts, our science, our math, and our history, which is Bookshark. And I'll link that video along with the Heritage Mom blog, some resources and books um, at her suggestion for the time period we're studying, which is um, colonial America up into the 1850s. And I'm really excited about that. Um, in addition to those things, our daily lessons will include, well, I wouldn't even say daily. I promise to share my schedule soon. I feel like I didn't do that last year and I'm holding myself to it this year to share the schedule and how this will be laid out. But two days a week, we will be doing our mindfulness exercises. Um, we will be doing a meditation every day, usually using the Headspace app. And I'll try to link everything that I'm saying below. But we use these mindfulness activity cards um, last year, and we will do it again this year. Um, so I will link that video as well if you guys want to see that. Um, so using this, these mindfulness, uh, these mindful games for kids, I shared this on my Instagram recently. Um, this was in Cameron's individual um, work or independent work box, but I think we're gonna do this together. We did the last two together um, and that seemed to go really well. So we'll keep doing that, great discussions. And then my mixed emotions. We used this one last year. We'll continue to add it in where it fits in this year. So in addition to this, we've got our big life journals and um, Big life in general has been um, a part of our character studies in our homeschool, so I'll share that below as well. But um, if you've not heard of Big Life Journal, definitely check that out. So I also want us to work on habits. So um, I found this, this is from Simply Charlotte Mason, the website, um, laying down the rails. And so we're going to use this curriculum to work on habits. This is literally called a habits handbook. And um, in looking at videos about this, I came across Abby from Rooted in Rest. She has a really good video about this. So I'll make sure um, to share that one below as well. Um, so we are gonna start working um, past all my little tabs. <laughs> working on the habit of attention. And so we'll be doing this for the first six to eight weeks. And so this is kind of what it looks like inside. Um, and there's so much information, so much. Um, so that's what we're going to be um, starting with. So this is more like your handbook. And this is more so like your, um, your the companion. And so we're going to be working on the mental habit of attention. And so I am... Um, about to sit down and go through and plan out things and write down um, our goals and how we go want to go about working on the habit of attention. So we'll be doing this twice a week. We'll be doing our um, mindfulness twice a week. Again, praying and meditating every day. Um, and this has some scripture in it. And so we will probably do our memory verse for the week or two weeks, however long it takes us to memorize it um, based off of what we are doing in our um, habits study. So in addition to that, and that's something that we do start our days with, um, Spanish. We are using Calico Spanish. I'll link that below if you guys want to check it out. I don't know that we were going to continue with it. That is something I'm still trying to figure out right now, how, how we're going to do Spanish this year. Um, these are some of the like little flashcards, if I can get it in focus, um, that come with, or you can print them out and laminate them, or you can buy them already um, made. I have this stored in this folder that lives on our cart. I shared that in um, a recent video, our organization of that. Um, and so I'll have to switch that up soon to accommodate for next school year. But I love a DK, <laughs> a dictionary or encyclopedia to enhance any lesson. So we've been using this along with our Calico Spanish for the last year. And we've been doing this at snack time. Um, but we're going to switch it up this year. I'm not sure quite yet, but I'll share when I do. But just know we'll be doing Spanish at least twice a week, um, once or twice a week. And then all about money is our finance study. We're gonna continue with what we were using last year. I have a video, I'll link this as well. Um, 
sharing that um, just to not share their little stuff um, but this is what it looks like inside and my kids love YouTube and so there's these pages if I can't find one where you go to YouTube to learn more so usually we can find things well of course I can't find a video a page now up oh, YouTube done <laughs> so they'll um, find something on YouTube usually we can find something on YouTube kids not always um, but this is definitely something I like for us to do together and I just printed these out and use my disc um, I would suggest laminating the first page and the back page for a sturdier notebook my kids haven't seen to mine but if yours would mine definitely laminate these pages and then hole punch along with this um, we've used a few books but these are the main two that we ended up using last year so that's what I'm putting on the cart um, so these cards are from sense to sense these are financial literacy cards the kids like quizzing each other on um, vocabulary financial vocabulary so that's been fun for them and then how money works another DK book um, and so here's just a quick flip through I love infographics um, and I think that this it helps my kids understand some pretty complicated well I think complicated things and helps me understand you know through graphs and then this book the everything kids money book um, has really really went well with this this study so we're going to continue doing that and these live on the cart in this um, envelope now Spanish you know this twice a week that twice a week in the mornings Spanish twice a week at snack and then all about money we're moving back we were doing it our money Mondays now we're moving it back to financial Fridays is what I'm thinking um, and so that's once a week I also really want us to do poetry and tea time this year we've done it with co-op before we did a literature lounge and then we did a poetry and tea time with another homeschool group but we've never done it really in our home so we're gonna do that this year book shark has um, this book scheduled in but I'm thinking we'll save it for Fridays and do the poetry during our poetry and tea time as well as this book for term one so for the first 12 weeks um, of our schooling our three weeks on one week off but but yeah for the first 12 weeks we will be reading through never forgotten um, and so just breaking this up little by little so that will be our poetry and during our poetry and tea time um, I think I mentioned that in her blog post let's see I actually have it right here in her um, blog post I need to organize this I'm just gonna create me a heritage mom blog binder um, for the um, colonial and revolutionary war time period she has um, composer picture poetry hymns um, all that so I um, you see in term one it's um, never forgotten the book I just shared um, but she's got composer study blog posts she's got um, a picture study blog post for this time period as well so I think I'm gonna pull from that and make some final decisions about what we're going to do um, from this during our poetry and tea time as well as um, art so she has a picture setting here like I just said or a couple on her blog post or a couple of blog posts on um, picture study um, we're gonna continue using color dynamics this year I really like um, this book but it is quite challenging since I'm not really an artist and I don't know a lot about watercolors but we learned some last year and followed along with some YouTube tutorials but um, Hannah from Pepper and Pine recently shared well I don't even know about recently I think she's been sharing and saving to her highlights um, some tutorials and some thoughts while working her way through this le these lessons with her daughter I think she's been doing them with her daughter and so I want to um, go back and look at her tips and advice and maybe just start this over because we were playing last year it made a mess but it was fun so continue to use this as a resource um, and teach art to children with Evan Moore 
I like this because um, it makes things so simple. I like how they break down, um, like learning about shape, about lines, about color. Um, um, sorry, doing this with one hand. Um, there's also like some artist study back here as well. So um, I really do like this as a resource for teaching art in our homeschool. And then here are just a few other books that we will rotate through during this time. Nothing overwhelming. We're not going to pull from every single book every single time. But where my planning comes in right now is this. <laughs> Everything else is pretty much scheduled out for me, but what I want to do for art. So I might find an art. Um, I might find an art curriculum, but I don't know. We've just been kind of playing with it. So I don't want to overwhelm us with too many things that we quote, have to follow, you don't have to follow curriculum, but I don't want to overwhelm us. So we're just going to continue to have fun with art, I think, and read through um, those books. So now geography, we really like um, our geography. This year, we um, are doing it through Bookshark for the most part. I'm just going to stay with that. But we love our letters from afar. Like we've been doing this for, I don't know, going on three years um, and so these are our letters you get a letter a month and these are the books that we often use when we get a new letter so I'm gonna um, um, continue with that but this is only once a month that we get the letters I'll let the boys do this in their own time or we'll um, do it together so they come in these cute little envelopes we are doing um, Luxor Egypt I think that's how you say that and it came with this little map that's so cute and uh, some field notes and then the letters are gorgeous my kids love learning about new places through them in places I would not have even you know thought to look up and share with them but they love reading through these letters so um, I will link that below and I'm actually affiliate of them we've been using them for a while and I love that love 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 the letters so we'll be doing that once a month for our geography. And then these books are just, you know, when <laughs> you just need a break from your curriculum, but you want to keep things, you know, you want to stay consistent and keep things going with what you're doing. Um, I like to have resources like this. So for vocabulary, I shared this one. Um, my son was using in his independent work box. I think I'll just pull this out and we will um, continue to work through this one together. Um, on those days where we just want something a little lighter, um, just, but just to stay consistent um, and with our rhythm. And then this is um, primary grade math challenge. Now this, my rising fifth grader will do with us, but I really got this with my rising third grader in mind. Um, he likes to solve little problems and work through things. So this is um, a book of word problems pretty much. And they have different levels. So I'll just use the higher levels with my older son. So again, the fun little cartoons in this one that I think my kids um, will enjoy. So just so you get a peek inside of that. So we'll be using those. This isn't scheduled. This is when we need a break, but we want to stay consistent and in our rhythm. Um, this is to help me I am not, I don't feel like I'm a great writer. And so that can be intimidating for me to teach my guys. Um, but this has been really helpful. Some moms suggested it in a Facebook group. And so I've actually been listening to this on audio. Um, but reading it, I've only gotten to like, I've read through the intro, listened to it. Now I'm going back through and reading and I'm on chapter one. But what has been helpful with our read alouds lately um, I feel like in really helping things to sink in and re understanding me, knowing if my boys aren't comprehending, are them forming these um, because, but, and so sentences. And I really, I, I just, I feel like that is amazing. Um, and so you see the example here, um, seeds need light to grow because seeds need light to grow, but seed need, seeds need light to grow so and I think they really have to think about and pull from the text. So, or, um, you know, I just think that's a really good way. And we've been incorporating, we've been incorporating that into our oral and written narrations. So this is support for me. And on those days where we don't 
feel like doing a full-on language arts or feel like doing a full-on writing, we can, you know, do our reading and pull from that and work on those um, sentences and we'll progress through, you know, the book as we do. I'm not pressed. This is for um, all grades, all subjects. So that's um, a nice support for me and has been encouraging to me. Okay, almost done. <laughs> so daily, the guys um, have online independent work. And for writing, they've been using Night Zookeeper. We're going to continue that. For math, teaching textbooks, they're going to continue that. And for language arts, science, and social studies, they've been using Time for Learning, and we will continue that. Um, I think for me, sometimes I feel like um, the one-on-one -on -one lessons, I want to make sure that I'm not doing too much coaching. And so um, by doing their independent lessons, I can kind of, I feel like I have a better understanding of what they're truly understanding and grasping without mama. <laughs> so that's why I use that. Um, I feel like my reason initially was just like a safety net, but now I really, I really like it for that reason. Um, so quickly for extracurricular activities, Cameron will be doing rock climbing. Aiden is going to take a break from that. He's still, his ankle is still healing from a rock climbing injury. So he won't be doing that this semester. Cameron will also be doing through a co-op, a music class and Taekwondo. Aiden, hopefully, will be doing uh, guitar lessons, and then through co-op, um, he'll be doing a physics science class in Taekwondo. So they'll have their individual classes, and they'll have Taekwondo together. Um, I think them having that time apart and learning from other people is important to our homeschool as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will be back with more videos soon. Again, thanks so much for spending some time with me today. If you want to see what we're up to more so on a daily, please join us over on Instagram at The Simple Happy Life. All right, guys. Whew, I'm out of breath. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye.